Um, so before we continue our work with um, systems of equations, um, in our work yesterday when we were solving for those coins, if you recall, we had, um, we had to solve for one of the coins to substitute something in. So in order to be really successful at using systems of equations to solve, um, you need to be pretty comfortable rearranging equations for review. Uh, or rearranging equations. So I thought we would review it today. This is an equation in what kind of form? Who remembers what we call this one? Standard form. This is standard form. It is currently in AX plus BY equals C form. Thumbs up if you're remembering this. We want to solve it for Y. And what's that going to put it into? It's going to end up being in y equals mx plus b. So here's some directions. Uh, these should help you remember the steps, and we'll just go through them together. Uh, you're going to start by highlighting the variable that you were solving for. We are solving for y. So you can circle it, highlight it, underline it. Step two is to use a distributive property if necessary to get rid of any parentheses. We don't have any parentheses in this example, so we don't need to worry about that. Step three is to use addition or subtraction to move entire terms to the other side of the equal sign. We have that. We have this 3x that needs to move to the other side. It's a positive 3x, and we're going to do the opposite and subtract it. And we end up with negative 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 16. Our final step is to use multiplication or division to get rid of the coefficient in front of the variable we are solving for. That is negative 4. So we are going to divide it into all terms on this equation. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 gives us a positive invisible 1. So that leaves us with our y. Negative 3 divided by negative 4 is going to stay 3 over 4. That's our slope, right? But the negative over negative means it's going to be positive. Positive 16 divided by negative 4 is going to give us a minus 4 or a negative 4. And that is the opposite version of the same equation. So I'd like you to open this up and look on the inside. There are six problems in here, and we're going to spend some time practicing this today. All of these you're going to be solving for the y. Some of them are also in standard form, like these two in the middle. And some of them are in point-slope form. Let's do this first one together because it looks a little bit different. It does have a parentheses. So our first step is we're going to highlight the variable that we're solving for. Our second step is we're going to use the distributive property to get rid of any parentheses. So we'll rewrite this one as y minus 3 is equal to 4x minus 8.
then we're going to use and um, the next step says use addition or subtraction. I'll move it back here. Use addition or subtraction to move the entire term to the other side of the equal sign. We're still trying to get the y by itself and this minus 3 is with it. So we are going to add it to the other side. And just a reminder, when we're adding or subtracting, we're dealing with like terms. When we're multiplying or dividing, it happens to all the terms. So I'm just going to restate that. If you look at the front here, I subtracted the 3x, and it's only happening with like terms here. And since there was no other, negative, no other x term, it just became negative 3x. When I divided, it goes into everything. Since I'm adding here, I'm just going to add that 3 to the negative 3 and the 3 to the negative 8, like terms. That leaves me with y is equal to 4x minus 5. And that's our solution. So I'm going to leave you with five more problems to practice, and we'll come back together in a little bit and check them. Um, I'll have solutions for you to look at, and if there's anything you've got different than me, we'll talk about how to, how to solve it and uh, get some good practice in.